Yeah. Cool. Okay, you ready? First talk of the day, hybrid solution integration, BizTalk server, Windows Azure BizTalk services, REST. That's what we're talking about. This is me, 10 years ago. I look different now. I'm an architect working for a company called Interaxis. It's like a local company, so it only works in Holland, working for local government, hospitals, that kind of stuff, finance, banking. So those are the areas we work in as a company. And I worked as an architect, and I'm like my fellow speakers here today, most of them a Microsoft Integration MVP, formerly known as BizTalk MVP. Author, speaker, something like today, a lot of community stuff I do. And running, so I like to run. Two weeks ago, I ran the first full marathon in Berlin. So that was nice to do. Lost some weight also, so that's good too. So that was cool to do. But okay, let's go to the session. Key takeaways for me today, what I want to present to you guys is giving you a clear picture of you know, how you can build a hybrid solution using the Microsoft integration stack. So basically what Microsoft offers in products and technology. Some of the considerations when building those solutions. So when I'll go through the demo, I will show you some of the stuff you need to take into consideration and we'll um, summarize it at the end of the talk and also give you a different view of the, the integration components. Okay. So hybrid, right? This is a word that's been buzzing around for kind of, for a, quite a while. So, you know, what does hybrid really mean, right? So this is a car. This formerly was my car. It's a hybrid car, basically having an engine which runs on natural resources like gas and also electrical motor, right? Because our natural resources will deplete. So now somewhere in time, maybe in a hundred years, we're out of natural resources. We won't have that much left anymore. So we need to think and cater for that and start thinking about, okay, how do I use still energy to have cars moving and so forth? So you have to transition to another kind of engine kind of stuff, but you can't do that instantly. Same as with cloud now today. So we've got a lot of stuff, IT on premise, and now you've got this whole cloud thing, but now they were you know, saying, hey, let's move to the cloud. But you cannot instantly move to the cloud. You have to do it in this transitional way as well. So that's also where you have to come in, or where hybrid comes into play, right? So you're connecting your on-premise system with what's out there in the cloud, and with, even with your devices today, like phones, tablets, and so on. So in that context, that's what I put the car here. It's like we're in the hybrid kind of situation, transition phase right now, right? It's the same with what we're gonna do today or what I'm gonna talk about today. So there are a lot of providers out there, so it's not like Microsoft is the only player when it comes to infrastructure as a service or SaaS or platform as a service. There's some of them listed here. Some of you know probably like Amazon and Google, Salesforce. So a lot of players out there providing all kinds of services and also abilities or capabilities with their solutions to build hybrid solutions as well. But I'm, we're at Microsoft and I'm gonna talk about Microsoft and I'm gonna talk about their technology and products. So just to have the scope, it's not like Microsoft the only player, there are more, but the focus here today is Microsoft, right? So, and if you look at Microsoft, they have different kind of technologies out there, some of the cloud like the service bus, BizTalk services, or something like on-premise we know today as BizTalk server. With that, there are different kind of flavors you can think of when it comes to integration, right? So it's like, I, I go from on-premise to cloud, something that will BizTalk now caters for with you know, all the new stuff they've put in, so you extend your reach outward towards the cloud with BizTalk Server. Or you can also view it as inward, where you get connections from applications to on-premise, like for instance with BizTalk Services. And of course you've got your Windows Azure Service Bus that can cater for kind of solutions as well, doing store and forward for load balancing, something I will demo as well, pops up mechanisms. So even with the Service Bus together with BizTalk Services or together with BizTalk Server, you can create kind of a hybrid solutions. So those are different kind of flavors. You like ice cream, right? So when you come to the ice cream shop, you have different flavors. So you have to choose. So looking at a big picture here, right? So you got these three technologies. So you got your BizTalk Server on-premise, connecting to all kind of applications, mainframe through host integration server, you got your connection with ERP systems, databases. So that's all within your enterprise, right? And then you got your service bus up in the cloud together with BizTalk services, providing connectivity to 
some other aspects or services within Windows Azure, connectivity devices through mobility services, something I think Paolo will be talking about later on in the session today. Connectivity with your partners through B2B and interaction with SaaS applications like, for instance, Salesforce or CRM Online. So combining them all together, those technologies are a mixture of, you can basically create hybrid kind of solutions. So let's look at some of the scenarios. So you got hybrid applications. So you connect your applications with what's out there through Windows Azure. So it's like on-premise versus Windows Azure itself. You have B2B, something I will not be discussing today, but those are the capabilities either offered through the Windows Azure BizTalk services and with BizTalk server, like trading partner management and all that kind of stuff. So that's the EDI aspect, something I will not be talking today. And of course, you've got your SaaS integration. That means with social media or with, um, you know, like CRM Online or Salesforce, that kind of thing you can think of too. So there are different kinds of hybrid kind of scenarios you can think of looking at what Microsoft can offer. Okay, so we've got BizTalk Server. That's one of the components you can build hybrid solutions with. And there are certain aspects if you look at BizTalk Server, right, today. It's different than the ver uh, earlier versions. Now you can run your BizTalk server in the cloud as a virtual machine. That's a new aspect, something new. You can just run it for testing or development kind of purposes. You have your connectivity with SaaS solutions through um, using the Windows Azure service bus. You can either do brokering or you can make use of the relay service, something I will be demonstrating too. And you have this aspect of platform as a service. So that's deploying your integration solution you build on-premise up there in the cloud like, for instance, you can do with the BizTalk services, something I will be demonstrating as well. So those are the three aspects looking at BizTalk server in general from a bigger picture. So shortly dive into, you know, virtual machine in the cloud is pretty straightforward. So you can just, you know, through your Azure account, click on virtual machines, provision it, and there you go, easy. And you only pay as you go. There's easy procurement. You can make use of the, the elasticity availability that's offered through the cloud. Connectivity is offered through using a virtual network, and then you can do kind of things like VPN, or you can have your connectivity going through web services. And of course, the provisioning. Again, you can just easily provision your virtual machine using the Windows Azure portal, or you can use PowerShell scripts, just a few lines of codes, and you just click it and we'll provision it for you. Or you can upload your existing virtual machine as a virtual hard disk, and then you just upload it, and then it will go into your image gallery and then you create a virtual machine as well. So pretty straightforward. Looking at BizTalk Server itself, new version, they got a few adapters out, right? Probably you know this adapter who's worked with 2013 already or played with it or provisioned the virtual machine in the cloud. Any of you guys or it's all new? No hands? Okay, well then this is definitely gonna be interesting for you. So you got relay adapters. Right, the basic HTTP lay, uh, relay and you got net TCP. So those are basically the relay adapters they offer. Or you can have a relay endpoint using the web HTTP, which is the adapter that now supports REST. And there's another adapter, service bus messaging, that supports connectivity with the service bus, either you know, connect to queues or to topics and subscriptions. And of course, there's another adapter too, like the SFTP adapter, which is added there too. So I think especially those adapters provided for you uh, with BizTalk 2013, the relay, service bus messaging, REST support, you know, those are really the key innovation aspect of this new version. So I mentioned service bus already today in this talk, and you know, what's basically, what's a service bus? Well, you can easily just view it as a middleware in the cloud. Right, so it's hosted by Microsoft and has some features on board, like the relay services. You have queues, similar to you know message queuing on premise. Then you have queues also in the cloud through the service bus. You have a kind of pub sub reliable messaging mechanism there through topics and subscriptions. You got something that's called notification or notification hubs, and of course you got a Windows Azure portal um, to uh, give you the ability to to manage your your services basically or create them. So, if we're going to the service bus, you got the service bus messaging adapter, right? So, it providing you the ability to do reliable messaging, leveraging what's out there in the queue, uh, in the, um, the service bus. You can do load leveling and load balancing. 
It's low cost. You'll see in my demonstration that it's easy to set up, so it's really fast time to market. You easily can create a solution using those adapters and have connectivity going with what's out there um, as in cloud services or you have another enterprise that uploads this data through services or topics and queues and uh, subscriptions and then you can just take those off. So you can have a, like a store and forward or load leveling. So you have brokering, asynchronous messaging, uh, security is all you know, provided for you through the uh, uh, access control service. So it's easy. You don't have to do that much for it. I'll show you that too. And there's also an ability to support sessions. Okay, let's look at the use case. So I like to do running. So let's say you've got this big event, let's say half marathon or marathons, like the participants can be, you know, 10,000, 20, or like the Berlin Marathon, there are about 40,000 plus people participating. So let's say you have this race, and at a certain marks, right, after 5K, 10K, 15, your time will be registered, and as soon as you finish, you see those times, right? So you can create a kind of a hybrid solution, where all these times when you go past those marks, those messages will be sent to what's called a topic, and I'll show you that, and then all these messages will go to certain subscriptions. So let's say for the 5K mark, you have a subscription, you got it for 10, 15, 20, 25, and so forth. This way you can provide kind of store and forward mechanism, but you also do kind of do load leveling. So let's say BizTalk is catered for processing messages, but it can't do all of them at once, or you want to have them first process 5K messages, then the 10K and so forth, and then just process them and put them in the data store. So that's will be something that I will be demonstrating to you. So switch over to my virtual machine. And here it is. And I'll show you the service before. Um, any of you guys already worked with Windows Azure or seen this portal before? No one? Okay. Well, this is the Windows Azure portal. So as soon as you subscribe to Windows Azure, either through um, a free subscription, at least you can do try it out for, I think, 60 or 90 days. Then you have this, and then you can just basically work with Windows Azure. So you have all these services, right, lying down here, like virtual machines. What I'm talking about, so it's easily you can do new virtual machine, quick create. And then you get this kind of wizard in front of you, and then you basically specify some of the details and properties, and then you just click, and there it goes. There's also something like the service bus. So within the service bus, you provide your create namespaces. That's an important aspect because it's multi tenant, right? So you have this notion of a lot of people using. The, the services that are provided by Microsoft. So that's also for, since it's for the service bus. So you provide a kind of what's called a namespace, and that's an important aspect because for that namespace, you can manage all the services. And the namespace has to be unique because of the Milton tenancy aspect of the, the Windows Azure, basically. So this is my service bus, and within the service bus, you have what I told you, namespaces, and within namespaces, you have like what you see here, queues, topics, relays, and so forth. So in this solution, I created a topic. And the topic and the queue are similar. With queue, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. And with um, using topics and subscription, you can have one too many. It's like a broadcast kind of pattern versus just one-on-one. -on -one. So in this case, I just created what's called, a topic is called running, right? So this is the running topic. Through the Windows Azure portal, you also have the ability to do kind of monitoring and configuration and stuff, but something I will not be going into. Just want to show you that there, within this subscription for this kind of hybrid solution, I've got a few subscriptions lined up there, right? So it's the 5K, it's 15, 10, 10, and so forth, and there's also what's something that's called an audit queue. I'll explain later what the audit queue is meant for. So this to set up, you can just in the portal create a topic, subscription, and so forth. Just by again going below here, and you can see that you within the service bus you can also create and provision all kinds of things within Windows Azure. You can also do that through .NET Code, by the way, and it also supports some other kind of language like Node.js and stuff. So you have the ability to to through code create topics, subscriptions, or queues, or whatever. So this is on the Azure side. Here, okay. So here I've got a port with multiple receive locations. Each receive location will go to 
one of these subscriptions. So in this case, the receive locations, all of them are configured with the service bus messaging adapter. So I'll quickly show you the, um, the configuration. So what's important here, again, is your namespace. So it's provisioned right in there, or at least you have to specify it. Then you get a default DNS, which is always service bus windows net slash running, which is the name of the topic. Then subscriptions, and then of course the subscription itself. Basic straightforward, that's it. And you got some other sorry um, properties you can specify. Things you probably know. And you got something like a prefetch count. Then that's an important thing because a prefetch count you can set a certain number and that will tell you how much messages you want to pick up at once. So if you make this number too large, right, you can think of that you get a lot of messages, in-flight messages in going into your BIS talk, while maybe not able to process them and send them for out, for instance, to a SQL Server. So you can get into a throttling state, something um, Tor will be talking about later on in the session, in his session as well. And of course, you got the notion of using session, which basically is like providing you the ability to do like first in, first time kind of pattern you, if you want to implement it. Okay? So this is just the addressing part of the service bus messaging adapter. Then you got something like the authentication right left, uh, provided for you for the access control service. Again, you specify your namespace and then you got the service bus access control windows net, which is just a standard um, DNS name. And you got something like owner and issue. I'll come to back to that in a second. And you got something like properties. So properties that are set on the message can be used as a promoted property within your BIS talk to be used for routing purposes. Okay, let's go back a little to the aspect of um, the access control service and specifying those credentials to have the access to your subscriptions. So we'll go back. So this was the namespace, right? And you got something here like connection information. So as soon as you provision your namespace, also a default key, like you, what you see here, is created for you. And if you go in the access management control uh, management portal, you can change that or regenerate or and so forth or have another um, name for your issuer. But default is owner and the key is created for you. And you specify those credentials in your adapter. Okay, let's go into the solution itself. So there's a lot of small aspect I like to um, discuss with you as well. And that's the properties. So this is the standard code. If you go to the portal and you look at samples, you see this kind of code. But what's important here that uh, you have to set a kind of a property on your message so that it can be routed to the certain subscription. So in this case, I put a, a subscription or a property on my message, which is the mark. So if I go to, for instance, I walk through the gate for the 5K mark, then the message will be, have a property with 5K, right? So then this message will go up to the topic and then it will be routed to the certain subscription, which is the 5K property. Let's also dive into the namespace itself. So if you've got the SDK 1.6 or <coughs> above installed, you have also this nice little plugin. That's this one that's provided for you and it's, uh, it gives you the ability to go into your service bus and look at some of the queues and topics. The reason I'm showing you this is that because if you want to add rules on your subscription, so that's basically what happens, right? To set the kind of rules to have that routing going. You have to specify those rules within this plugin. So you cannot do this in a portal. So what I wanted to show you is, or is like the rules of filters. So filters are your subscription. So you can set, okay, this subscription, all the 5K messages have to go in. This subscription, 10. So all these subscriptions have a kind of a filter. So the properties on your message and the message will be routed to the certain subscription. So a similar kind of pops up mechanism you see in BizTalk, right? 
And I've got the um, solution itself, which is mimics just, uh, let's say, a watch or some device you have that it will go with you and register your time to send it up. Or there's this device at the 5, 10, and whatever K mark you're in, and that will send the message up too. But it's just something to, to show you how it works. Okay. <coughs> Let's see if the connectivity works. Yes, it does. Okay. So this message will be sent to the service bus to that topic and then be routed to the subscription and then BizTalk will pick it up. So it's being sent. Goes to that receive location and then it will be routed to um, this talk or to, to eventually going to a data source, which is the SQL Server database. So let's see if Peter Pan is in there. No, Peter Pan is not in there. Usually there's some latency or because I set up the virtual machine here. So I might have to give the um, host instance a, uh, a restart. Okay, see if Message in there right now. No, nope. well, I can assure you it does work, but um, that's usually the case when you do demos, right? Okay, so there was just service bus messaging, and this is just a sample to show you. You can build a hybrid solution and show you some of the aspects like the load leveling and load balancing. So, you think you can see how you can leverage the service bus doing the kind of scenarios where you can have huge loads on your service bus and then you just take them off in the way you want it. Okay, so service bus messaging adapter. There's another adapter or two of them. Then those are the relay adapters. So those give you the ability to quickly expose interfaces to the cloud itself really fast and extend the reach of, let's say, data or your processes. Again, compared to the service bus messaging, it's low cost, fast time to market. And this feature was introduced with 2010 for the feature pack, like it's called Connect for Services. That was something I demonstrated last year here in Milan too. This feature of the ability to set up a relay endpoint to expose your data. And you can expose local and cloud endpoints. You can leverage it using the Bistock DOPCF publishing wizard. So using the Bistock, uh, Bistock DOPCF publishing wizard, you can also go for that wizard and now say, hey, I want this endpoint exposed in the cloud. You have either asynchronous messaging, just one way, fire and forget, or asynchronous or synchronous messaging request response. And again, the security is leveraged through the access control service. So I'm going to demo that too. So I'll just send up a message to a relay endpoint that will be routed to a process that's running. It's an orchestration. And the result of that orchestration is sent back to basically the caller or the client. So as a client, I'm going to use something what's called the Service Bus Explorer. Anybody familiar with Service Bus Explorer? It's created by somebody who will speak to you here today as well, Paolo Salvatore. So that's this nifty tool. So what you do is you basically connect to your namespace within the service bus, and then you have access to all your entities and services. So that's will, that, those are the queues, as you can see here. Topics. So that's similar to that plugin I showed you in Visual Studio, but it also I'll enlarge this a bit. Give you the ability to see your relay services, basically the endpoints that are registered in the service bus. And I'll show you how to register an endpoint by setting up a port and receive location, how to do that. So let's switch over to the administration console. You got a receive port, right? And within that receive port, I've got set, I set up an endpoint, an endpoint using the net TCP relay adapter. So you just choose the adapter, pretty easy. You can also do this through the DOPCF publishing wizard, but this is, I think, far simpler. And again, similar to service bus messaging, you specify the namespace, then you got your default DNS, and then just a name of your 
uh, endpoint basically. We've got a binding, a few things, and then the security, transport. Here you can enforce that the client also has authenticated itself to the service bus, and that authentication is the same properties I just showed you in the connectivity um, details of your namespace. So it has to use the same set of credentials as through setting up this endpoint. You can enable service discovery. And what basically this means, if you go to your namespace, so your, your namespace and then the default DNS, you see your publicly listed services here. And that's just because I specified it, right? Saying, hey, I want to be discoverable and you can see me. If I change it, let's say I don't want to be discoverable, then you won't see that endpoint listed right here as a service. And then you got something like a messaging tab that's just going to do with the general uh, WCF. And by enabling it, you'll see it popping up right there in the cloud. If I disable this, and I refresh this, you'll see that it will, be, that it will disappear. See, now it's gone. So I'll enable it again, and it will be up. So this is basically very, oh, louder? Okay. This is basically a way you can set up an endpoint in, in the service bus. Now with the service bus explorer, you have the ability to test your endpoints. So instead of writing your own client, you just use the tool created by Paolo. So you put in your payload right here. Just the payload for a message that will be sent to that endpoint. And we, behind that endpoint, there's a process running. In this case, it's a simple processing, adding the numbers 1 and 10. Here you specify the binding and some of the other aspects of, this, of, the, um, of the binding and also enabled logging so you can see what happens. So it just hit start and this basically means that that message is sent to the service bus relay service that will relay that message to that endpoint, basically that receive location in this talk then that message get routed to the orchestration that has a subscription of that message and then the result is pushed back in this case to my client which is the service bus explorer. So here you see the payload that's being sent up there. This is all locked for you. Some of the header information and you see the result of the simple calculation right here. So this is just a demonstration to show you how easy it is to expose either your orchestration as in a process within your data center, or let's say you expose some of the data. Let's say you've got a production database, but you don't, of course, want to have access, give access to that production database, but you can extract a view and expose that view through an endpoint within the service bus. Pretty easy, and this was also possible using the BizTalk services um, for connect, uh, BizTalk connection for services feature that was offered with 2010. Okay, so we've seen service bus, messaging, and we've seen the relays. Now I'm going to talk about REST. So REST is supported through the uh, Web HTTP adapter. That uh, give you, gives you the ability to support lightweight kind of integration scenarios, which I'm going to demonstrate. You have many SaaS providers, cloud, uh, like uh, social media, they all support RESTful APIs, right? And this is also will be demonstrated through using mobility service and stuff, something that Polo will do later on. And with this adapter, this web HTTP adapter, you can expose endpoints or you can tune them. And you can either expose them like through a relay for the WCF publishing wizard. And then also, also use the um, access control service again that's provided for you. But in many cases when you, for instance, consume RESTful APIs, let's say for Salesforce, they got their own authentication scheme. So you probably will divert to having something like OAuth. Or for instance, if you want to connect to 
uh, Azure um, storage, for instance, then you're, there's another authentication scheme as well. So you don't use the access control service, but there's another authentication scheme based on key value pair. But luckily, there's a out of the box behavior you can use to set up the, um, the security. So what I've done for this demo, I just simply found a uh, service, which is the Federal Aviation Agency service that provides you a RESTful API to give you details about a airport and the, what the weather is at the airport. So like a composed service. So out there just supports one method. This is the get method. And that's a, a service you could uh, consume through BizTalk. So let's look at that solution. So basically, this service only supports GET, right? So what you provide is just a area code, IATA code. And this service only gives you information about all the airports within the US. So not outside the US, it's purely mainly in the US itself. So if you, for instance, provide this URL, so it's basically the um, location of the RESTful API together with the area code or the airport code together with the format you want to have your um, your data, it will give you this result back. So you can do this in a browser. But you can also consume this service through BizTalk. So I will then show you the configuration of the web HTTP adapter. So it's a send port configured with a web HTTP. Let's look at the configuration. One is the address itself. So where does the address of the service reside? So services, FFA, government, and then it's the airport service. And what I'm going to be specifying here as well, and that's an important aspect, is called the HTTP method and the URL mapping. So what you'll be specifying is that it's a GET and that's the only operation supported on this service. And then there's something like uh, what's called URL mapping because you have to provide the complete URL including the airport code and what kind of format you want. And of course you don't want to do this hard code, at least not the area, uh, the airport code. You want to do this dynamically. So the way you can do this dynamically is by specifying what's called a variable and that's between the, the accolades and specify the property of the message that has that piece of information. So you will create in your schema, or at least you create a property schema saying, hey, this is a property, and this property is mapped inside of this adapter to eventually create dynamically your URL. So my client will show you in a second, my client will just send out a message containing only the airport code, which basically is a promoted property that will be used in this send port to be able, give you the ability to eventually create the complete URL and send that to that service. You got binding, you got security, well that's something I won't be using it in this demo. The other aspect which is important is that because it's REST and in a GET operation, like this has the tendency to send out message bodies, right? But for that method you don't need a message body, so you need to suppress it. So with the beta you still have to build your own custom pipelines, but now this is implemented in the full-fledged version we know today that you can sp suppress those bodies if they're not required for the method you want to apply on your RESTful API. So for the get and delete, you can suppress those so they won't be sent out. Okay. So the way it works is just, I have this application within my virtual machine and I just select an airport, let's say LAX, I click on status and what will happen is then the message will be sent to BizTalk where I just provisioned a, uh, a simple service, expose the schema as a service for the WCF publishing wizard that just accepts the message with only the um, the airport code, and that will be routed to that send port that will consume this RESTful service sending up that message, or at least doing that method together with the LAX code. 
and it will provide me the information back, and it's just rendered in this uh, UI. But you've seen already what the result will be if you just sticked in the um, URL in a browser. So this is basically a simple scenario where you can consume RESTful services. There are many ways you can work with the web HTTP, but this is just a simple example of how you can use it. The thing though is, what I like to note is this is just a, a service that's for free. So if there's any changes to the way it will respond to me, as in the data that's being provided, they can change the schema. So in the past I noticed it, that my sample wasn't working. That's just because they rearranged the schema or the output. So that's something that can happen with if you consume freely RESTful APIs. The more commercial ones like Salesforce or the ones through let's say social media, they probably will notify you saying, hey, there will be schema change, uh, change in the schema. But like, for instance, this REST API with the FAA won't do that for you. Okay, so I've talked about BizTalk and all its newly adapters. And there's another new technology which was released in June as a general preview now for, the, for, for everyone. I don't know if anybody worked already with uh, the Windows Azure BizTalk services or look, have had a look at it, a peek, or no one? Okay, well, this is a new service provided uh, through um, Windows Azure. It's a dedicated service. It's hosted and managed by Microsoft in its own data center. And it basically provides compute and storage kind of thing, which I'll demonstrate later. And it's got a predictable performance, as in if, as soon as you provision that BizTalk service, then on the background there's a certain dedicated pieces of hardware or virtual machines provided for you to make use of that BizTalk service. The sandbox, because of the multi-tenancy, right, there are more people that can use that BizTalk service, so you got this isolated sets of BizTalk services, everybody starts provisioning them through their Windows Azure account. Of course it's got an SLA, 99%, 0.9. The, um, the health monitoring, I will show you the portal as well, is done through the Windows Azure portal, also the provisioning of the BizTalk service. And then the applications you can monitor is done through the BizTalk portal, and you can use also that BizTalk portal to do the EDI kind of thing, to set up X12 agreements and all that stuff, something I won't be demonstrating for you. And you can also do some raw tracking and monitoring through user stores. Or you can see the monitoring as well in the BizTalk portal. So it basically provides AAE service, so you can bridge or create bridges between a service that's running in the cloud and something within your on-premise data center, like line of business systems, for instance. Or you can have uh, one enterprise sending up data through the, um, the bridge, and then it will go to your data center. And it also provides B2B service, something I will be talking about today, but those B2B services can be built within the BizTalk portal itself. And it's pretty extensible. You can do some customization within uh, transforms, pipelines, and there's an API if you want to do EDI. I'll be talking or focusing on bridge because it's integration. And let's say you got this, you got an application on one end that will send a message to a bridge. And this bridge will then route it either to one of its destinations, one of, supported by all these protocols. So you can send something to a blob storage, that's Windows Azure. Um, data storage, or you can send a message to the service with a relay endpoint. Now this relay endpoint is basically a relay, something you can set up within um, your own data center basically by, create, by installing a component which is a part of this Windows Azure BizTalk service, which is the BizTalk adapter service. And basically it's just a wrapper around the BizTalk adapter pack. And I think you're pretty familiar with the BizTalk adapter pack because it provides connectivity to the databases SQL and Oracle, and also to EUP systems like SAP, Oracle, eBusiness e Suite, and Siebel. So it's just a, a wrapper, so you install it, and then you can, have set, you can set up relay uh, line of business relays through what I'll show you, I'll demonstrate to you for Visual Studio. And basically what a bridge is, is just you have sources on one end, which can be FTP, FTPS, HTTP, or just you send a message to this bridge, which I'll be demonstrating later on. Then you got this notion of what's called a bridge, or a pipeline. And the pipeline basically just supports what's called a VDR pattern. So it's like validate, enrich, transform and rich and then route to one of the destinations, which could be something in the service bus, uh, another service, uh, blob storage, SFTP, or one of your line of business systems. So 
So let's say I send a message to this bridge, well, which exposes some of the data around, you know, my running um, one of my runs, right? Of the, like the, the previous um, solution I showed you. Then, of course, you got this big collection of data, and let's say you, as a runner, want to have these results back, so like a pull mechanism, to show you know what are your results. You can do this in many other ways, but this is just a way I wanted to demonstrate how you can expose some of the data through using a bridge, basically. So I will run through some of the aspects of the BizTalk services. So this is the service within Windows Azure, and you can just by custom create, and then you go through a set of specifications, and in the end you click OK, and then it will provision for you. So basically what will happen, it will set up a data store for the monitoring, it set some other stuff, and they, uh, basically creating a kind of a hosting environment where you can push your... Um, um, sorry, where you can push your solution to. Solution you create through Visual Studio. So this is the EAI part, right? The integration of, let's say, your on-premise line of business system or something else with something what's out there, like a cloud service or an enterprise that wants to, you know, communicate with you. Or you want to expose data, for instance, data that's, this case, all this runner data I've got somewhere hidden in this SQL database. So the provision of the BizTalk servers itself is done through the portal. And as soon as you're done with it, it will basically also provide you with a portal. And this portal is still built in Silverlight. And here there are some kind of the capabilities which you can use to set up an EDI kind of solution. So that's done all the way up in the, um, the BizTalk portal itself. And it will also give you a view of the bridges you have deployed. And the bridges, those are the um, solutions you built on-premise, which I'm going to show you in a second, done for Visual Studio. Let's see if it's correct. I've got one bridge deployed up there, unless it's suddenly disappear. It does say one. So here it is. So there's one bridge deployed up there in the cloud. Okay, let's look at my bridge. This is pretty simple. So if you install the, the tools necessary to build your integration uh, solution, you get templates basically provided for you in Visual Studio. There are just two simple templates. If you, I'll just show you. Project. So if you install the... Um, the SDK uh, and tools necessary to build those solutions, you will see these two new templates provided for you in Visual Studio. And the BizTalk service basically then gives you this template give you the ability to drag and drop basically the stuff you need to build your bridge. So you got your destinations right here, you got your sources, and you got your bridge itself. So it can be a one-way bridge or a request reply bridge or pass-through bridge. So here I just dragged and dropped simply a XML request reply bridge, and I've got here my line of business system I want to connect to. And the way you get this line of business system is then if you look at the BizTalk Adaptive Services, which is just that wrapper around IS, you select this, and then if you click on it, you see your line of business types, which are basically all these adapters that are installed of you, the wrappers around them, and you just click the target you want to connect to, so let's say SQL, and in case there's a new data source I want to connect to, then I just add new line of business target, and then I just go through a series of steps in a wizard that's, you know, displayed right here. So I won't go through it, but it's just specifying some of the parameters of your SQL database, 
uh, of course, you have to send up some of the credentials, like I showed you also in the relay service and in service-based messaging, like the credentials you need to have to have your service provider or your endpoint registered up there in the cloud. So those are the few of the steps, and then that's just basically it. So, and then you just drag and drag this relay target onto your canvas, and then you just align between them, and then this is in a nutshell basically how you create your solution, and then you just deploy it, and then it's just going up there to your Bistock service you provisioned earlier on. So this is basically in a nutshell how you easily could create your solution within Visual Studio, then deploy it, and then it's basically running up there in the cloud. So that's why it's called you know, Platform as a Service. You build it on-prem, but then you, you basically deploy it out there. So let's say I want to have my data after my run. Oh, hang on, this is the wrong one. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is the one. Simple UI, but what I'm redoing is just sending my, you know, my running number to that bridge, which will then go to my database, get the data out, and just push it back to me. So these are the running times. <clears throat> His name is familiar? That's you? I don't know if you like running, but... Um, so I tested it so you know it, it does work, but it's like pushing all that data out and later on you want to get it back. You can also, for instance, make use of the notification service. Instead of doing a pull, it's being pushed to you. That's another way you could do it. But then you don't make use of the Windows Azure uh, Bistock services. I just used this sample to show you some of the aspects of the Windows Azure Bistock services. Okay, so... Hybrid solutions, I show you a couple of demos, I talked you through some of the aspects and the, uh, the um, technology that Microsoft offers for you, but there are some considerations you have to take into account during development, which I showed you some of the aspects, but it's also in general, so you have to look at security, right? So the access to your resource and identity management. Some of them is controlled or provided for you use it, uh, by the access control service itself. Then, of course, you've got your governance. Like I said, at the REST interface, what if schemas change? Or, you know, you know, don't get notified about changing of your schemas and that style kind of stuff. Then, you know, basically, your solution breaks. Something you don't want. Then the availability. Why, okay, so uh, Windows Azure Scalable Available, what about those endpoints set up through Bistock Server itself? Because then Bistock Server is basically, you know, could be a single point of failure, or you have to see to it that those are available because of the endpoints you have exposed in the cloud, right? If you just disable them or they're gone, you saw that, then your endpoint is gone as well. You have to think about load, because nowadays, you know, with the cloud and a lot of devices, there's much more load on the cloud itself let's say also for your service bus, let's say all these messages down, you have to think about it too, so like, hey, I kind of pull down these messages all at once because maybe then my uh, system get overburdened. Also with hybrid solution, you have to think about, hey, a lot of it now is REST oriented, right? So it's not that SOAP anymore, a lot is REST. So there are a lot of a REST APIs out there, so you have to think about that too. So it's not all the way SOAP and HTTP kind of adapter, so you might more tend to use that web HTTP adapter. You get interoperability because there are multiple platforms, but sports there because you can use any kind of technology to write your messages to the service bus queues a topic, right? And then you can pull it off. And of course, you also have to think about latency. So, you know, getting the tokens, tokens from the access control, for instance, that may take some time. Or a token from, line, let's say, Salesforce also, you provide your credentials first before you get a token back, before you can start performing all kinds of operations. So that's something you have to think about too. Okay, so you see, there are different options to choose from when building hybrid solutions using Microsoft, right? So you've got server, you've got the service bus, and you've got the uh, Windows Azure Bistock services. And they're all key components for building all kinds of hybrid solutions. And I think the concepts and technology itself is easy to understand if you're a business professional, right? It's not like I did some magic, like specifications of the service bus 
messaging adapter or the relay services, not like it's rocket science. If you've worked with BizTalk before, then this is easily to understand and work with. And I think with what they're doing now, Microsoft really has taken a big step forward if you look at kind of innovation and the cloud in general and in total. But they're not there yet, but they're working hard on it. So it's, it's pretty amazing what they've done so far. So, call to action. So I haven't seen that many hands today, so you guys really need to work, if, or if you want to work. So, you know, you can build your own virtual machine using Hyper-V, or you can provision a virtual machine in the cloud, it's right there. And then create your own hybrid kind of solutions using those adapters provided for you in BizTalk 2013, or you can provision a BizTalk service. And you can examine and learn from many existing examples. So I've written in a few, some of the guy, other guys have written in uh, samples too. You can use them and go through them and see how it works. There's also Microsoft that provides tutorials to work with these adapters. So you can use those too. You'll find a lot on the MSDN code gallery. Um, also through the uh, TechNet Wiki, there's lots of articles around BizTalk service, or at least a few of them. There's more articles around service-based messaging. So a lot of what I've talked today, you'll also find back in the TechNet Wiki. So something really you have to you can look at. So well, here are my details and another picture of me ten years ago. Um, Steve Young, LinkedIn, uh, my Twitter handle, and also my um, my blog. And this was my talk. So, oh, right in time. Any questions? Or are you just flabbergasted like oh? <laughs>